Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Green Lime. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Green Lime, as you would expect, is a green ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the pen into it, or put the pen into a different ink. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Pierre Cardin president with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. Now, before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is a chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down, immediately dunk it into water for 10 seconds. What we see is that it pushes straight up. We get a very light kind of yellow left behind. We see the yellow blend into the green with that blue across the top. Now, if I didn't know better, I would swear that this chromatography is the same chromatography from Robert Oster's Green Green, but it's not. It's a different ink. The chromatography just looks incredibly similar. Now, when we look at the one on the right, I let that dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into the water. And while largely it looks the same, it doesn't creep as high up on the page, which is what you would expect after letting it dry, these results are reversed from what we saw with Robert Oster's Green Green. It creeped higher once it was let to dry, which was a strange thing. Again, this chromatography looks a lot like his Green Green, although the ink does look quite different. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. Now, I let this smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles the highlighter much better than the green green did. There is a little bit of feathering that occurs, a little bit of spread that occurs, but it is still completely readable, which would make me not afraid to use this ink in a note-taking situation. Also, when we look at the water, we see that it completely reactivates, pulls almost all of the ink off the page. It leaves a little bit of that yellow behind. We see the dots of the rhodia paper coming through. Now, pen flush did everything water did, just slightly more, but I don't believe that you're gonna need flush to get this or really any Robert Oster ink out of your pen. Bleach, as would be expected, obliterates it. Don't use bleach to get this out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Green Lime has a viscosity of 2.35, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use the extra fine and medium nib writing samples done on Claire Fontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's Green Lime has an average dry time of 19 seconds, making it normal. Again, just a normal ink. Beautiful, but normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form. It's my second sample of this ink as I'm really a serial, a serial sampler. To keep my writing sample consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. I use a Jinhao X450 oops, with a Goulet medium and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. And this is one of the few inks that the, uh, what's it called? A smear of the ink, uh, an ink swab, that would be it, because I don't really do them. That the ink swab, I don't normally pay any attention to it for color. This is one that I had to go back and look, and this looks like this all over. This is so unexpected, so rare that your swab can look just like your writing. Let's take a look at this. Claire Fontaine. It gives no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Look at that crazy shading. I'm going to be calling it camouflage a lot because it goes through a ton of tones all over. And it's just, ah, oh man, look at, I just, wow, really, wow. No halo, no sheen. The shading's nuts. 
extra fine. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Look at that shading. Look at what's going on in brown, super dark, super light, getting dark again. Amazing. The, right in the middle, really light spots. Gorgeous. 13 seconds to dry. The medium, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. The shading is there. The shading in the medium is much more gradual than what we saw with the extra fine. It took 19 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine doesn't show the color variation that we got in the writing. And the scrubby in the medium showed way more color variation than we got in the writing. Tomoy River. Ignoring the scrubby where I put it on stupid thick, we get no bleeding, and of course we do get ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread. It does have halo all over it. The entire thing has been traced by magical gnomes that came in after I wrote, and they got out their little black brushes and started copying around the letters, and they did it the whole way through, and it's beautiful. Now, it has no uh, sheen or shade, but that haloing is fantastic. Extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo. I'm sorry, halo the whole way through. I thought I heard something. And the halo the whole way through, it's beautiful. It's a tiny, thin, dark line around all of the writing. It just is really, really gorgeous to look at. And the halo gives this really nice contrast to all of it. 21 seconds to dry, totally worth it here. The medium, no feather, no spread, a ton of haloing. A ton of haloing. It only doesn't halo in its lightest spots. No sheen. It does offer little bits of shading. At the beginning of the bee, it's lighter. In the middle of fox, it's lighter. At the beginning of jumps, it's lighter. Not a lot of shade, but there are spots of shade. 28 seconds to dry. Now the extra fine showed no color variation. We got none. The medium shows little bits in there. It looks like a wet, a, a, a drop of water got on. That's not what happened. That's just how it's shaded in the scrubby. And that's kind of what we got up here. The smear test, stop trying to smear and recover on Tomoe River because you're not allowed to. Rhodia. Now, you know, again, the scrubby. The scrubbies tend to sometimes come through because I'm putting it on stupid thick. Other than that, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. No real shading with the 1.1. Eh, sorry. Extra fine, no feather, spread, halo, sheen. And great, great shading all over it. Just really nice. 14 seconds to dry. Even better when we get to the medium. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and nice shading all over. It's really, really very nice. 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby of both show us some color variation. We do get plenty of color variation in the writing. And the smear test says you can likely recover it, and I believe it. Now, when it went wetter, so I put this in my uh, Pierre Cardin, it's a president, medium nib. And look at that. That's not funny lighting. That is just camouflage, shading all over, really light, really dark, just beautiful, beautiful. Man, Levenger paper. Levenger paper, which has the problem of the super thin lines. If you write with a PO nib or you have super tiny handwriting, go for it. I wish they made thicker lines. Otherwise, I love their paper. It has no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread. It has haloing. Not as noticeable, but it is there all over. It's a much thinner halo all over the 1.1. No sheen and no shade. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo or sheen, and beautiful shading all the way through all of this writing. I really like this green ink and how it stands out. There's a ton of green inks I really like for that reason. I just don't want to ink all of my greens, or all of my greens, all of my pens with green inks because I like some other colors. But man, oh man, does green do a good job. Nine seconds to dry. Darker tone with the medium. No feather spread. Halo sheen. And we didn't get shade with the medium on Levenger paper. It took 13 seconds to dry. 
The extra fine scrubby showed us color variation that we did get. The medium shows color variation, but we really didn't get it. The smear test, you can likely recover it if you smeared this while you were writing. Franklin Kristoff, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. It's a very nice tone on this paper. The extra fine, a slightly lighter tone with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and lovely, lovely shading. It is just pleasant to just look at this, which is basically scribbles, and it looks great. It makes this, which is nothing, look nice and makes me want to read it. 11 seconds to dry. The medium, no feather, spread, halo, sheen. We did lose the shading with the medium. I know it looks lighter there. That's where I normally put my thumb. I didn't point it out in the past quite a bit, but that's where I normally, for some reason, put my thumb while I'm writing. I think I put my thumb down here, and then as I'm coming across, I bring my thumb up to hold the paper steady, and that's what we get. So I don't really pay attention to right there. So we have no shading. 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows us some color variation. We did get color variation. The medium, the medium shows us none. We didn't get any. And the smear test, that's a solid maybe to recover it if you smeared while you were writing. A solid maybe. That's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's green lime, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Private Reserve's Invincible Black because black and green look good together. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Green Lime? Now, coming off of Robert Oster's Green Green, you would think because I really liked how that one performed, this one might have a hard time. The thing is, this one's even better. It shades better. Its shading is absolutely gorgeous. This is top notch on with every pen on just about every paper. It's amazing. The shading is like camouflage, which I love when it looks like that. Thanks for watching.